जय श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की जय रजभूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की जय श्री क्षेत्र जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय गंगा मई यमुना मई की जय भक्ति देवी तुलसी महारानी की जय समवेद भक्त वृंद की जय हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जय निताय गो प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि गो आलोरी स्तुति मुरली ओडी धरे कृष्ण आलोरी स्तुति मुरली ओडी धरे कृष्ण नमस्ते सारस्वत देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाचाच देश तारिणे रीडिंग फ्रॉम गीता चैप्टर टू कंटेंट्स ऑफ गीता समराइज वर्स नंबर ट्वेंटी एट एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन कृष्णा इज लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज कंक्लूडिंग हिज सांख्या फिलोसफी एक्सप्लेनिंग द डिटेल्स अबाउट द सोल एंड द बॉडी समराइजिंग इट because he is going to enter into the next aspect from sankhya yoga is going to go into the karma and nishkama karma aspect so he is concluding with this two verses 28 and 29 om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथोजय मुदीर नष्टाप्रयेशु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति हरि ओम तत्सत अव्यक्तादीनि भूतानि व्यक्तमध्यानि भारता अव्यक्तनिदनानि एवा तत्र का परिदेवना अव्यक्तादीनि भूतानि व्यक्तमध्यानि भारता अव्यक्तनिदनानि एवा तत्र का परिदेवना अव्यक्तादीनि भूतानि व्यक्तमध्यानि भारता अव्यक्तनिदनानि एवा तत्र का परिदेवना अव्यक्तादीनि व्हाट वर्ड इन द बिगिनिंग अनमैनिफेस्टेड भूतानि ऑल दैट आर क्रिएटेड व्यक्त मैनिफेस्टेड मध्यानि इन द मिडल भारता ओ डिसेंडेंट ऑफ भारता अव्यक्त नॉन मैनिफेस्टेड निदनानि व्हेन वैंक्विश्ड eva it is all like that tatra therefore ka what paridevana lamentation translation by divange sc bhakti vedanta swamsh gopas gopad ki jay all created beings are unmanifest in their beginning manifest in their interim state and unmanifest again when annihilated so what need is there for lamentation please repeat all created beings are unmanifest in their beginning manifest in their interim state and unmanifest again when annihilated so what need is there for lamentation for god we should hope if you read accepting that there are two classes of philosophers one believing in existence of the soul and other not believing in the existence of the soul there is no cause for lamentation in either case non believers in the existence of soul are called atheists by the followers of vedic wisdom he is concluding so that's why he is bringing all philosophers both the vad uh, are um, atheists what do you call that uh, nastik vad yeah nastik vad both the vad maya vad brahma vad so all those <laughs> either way whatever way you look at this this applies the last concluding verses beginning middle end uh, even day to day basis our house our car our cell phone uh, everything pretty much in the beginning it is unmanifested in the middle is manifested at the end again 
it, nothing lost permanently. So that's what he is repeating with this gross body. So what is the worry? Why are you so lamenting, caught up? Hmm? Just do your duty. Yet even if the argument says we accept this atheistic theory, there is still no cause for lamentation. Apart from the, okay, soul doesn't, okay, soul is not there, even if you don't believe. No God, no soul. Okay, anyway, body is going to uh, get new body, you are going to give up this body, uh, even if it thinks back of chemicals, uh, as a Buddha was, uh, Sunyavad, because everything is zero after you give up, so you enjoy it, last minute. But they also try to, try, try to control the senses. Uh, and Buddhists also, they pray to Lord Buddha. That is also Nirvana. So, because they don't, they can't believe you at the time, Vedas. So, they were killing left and right, so that's why Lord Buddha came. So, Mohai Surat So, that's how, step by step, gradually brought them to someone's, at least they, they will follow Lord Buddha, even though they don't know that he is the Supreme Lord, bewildering them. Apart from that separate existence of the soul, material elements remain unmanifested before creation. Yeah, in the house, the bricks, in the beginning, all of them. And then we'll see new, nice house. And at the end, after some years, everything will collapse. So, in Edison, especially if you are in Edison, you know how many new houses are coming up, how many dismantling is going on. Everything is finished. And so, in just a matter of a half day, a few hours, they dismantle the whole house. And so, it is like that, unmanifested. From this, uh, from this subtle state of manifestation comes manifestation. Just as from ether, air is generated. From there, this is how the first is sound vibration and ether was generated. Big Bang Theory they call, but they don't know inside what is happening. This is what is happening. Ether and sound, then the air um, generated. Then from air, fire is generated. From fire, water is generated. From water, earth is generated. They are systematically five gross elements. Mahabhuta, Pancha Mahabhuta, a pure. From the Lord's glance, Karanavata Gosavish. From this earth, many varieties of manifestation. Who is giving? Moon is giving the taste. Earth has taste. Earth and moon combinedly, they are giving the taste to all the vegetables. Otherwise, who is nourishing? How you are getting the, um, from plants, different vegetables, different fruits, have different, different tastes, different rasas. Who is bringing that? That is again, raso always are. The rasa is given by again Lord Krishna through moon god, through different empowerment is being given. Uh, that duty, that particular department. So that's how they could do. From the earth, many varieties of manifestation take place. Take, for example, a big size paper manifested from the earth. When it is dismantled, manifestation becomes again unmanifested and remains as atoms in the ultimate stage. The law of conservation of energy remains, but in course of time, things are manifested and unmanifested. This is the difference. And what cause is there for lamentation, either in the stage of manifestation or in unmanifestation? Only cause is anadi bahir muka jive atay maya japati yadhare. So long we are being accustomed to this body. So long we are attached to sometimes 20, 30, 40, 50 years. If you are there in one house, oh, we, we become attached to move out from that house. It becomes very difficult. Just like we are all, most of us are in IT job. Imagine we are there 20, 30, 40 years in one company. Uh, we have to change the job. Oh, it's going to be extremely difficult. We don't even know how to create a resume. We don't even know how to prepare for interview because we are not used to now. Because we are working for so long in the company, we have no idea what's going on in the outside world. It is like that. So when we are so much deeply attached to the body, then uh, we have no idea of the soul. So that, that's what it is. But here, Krishna is, okay, forget, there is no soul. Then what is their, their lament? They are going to get new body, Vishma and Drona. You are going to get new body as well. So what is there to lament? Even if you don't believe soul, if you don't believe God, you don't believe any philosophy. Still. No need to lament. No point in lamenting because it is not going to give you anything in return. Just mind's trouble only. Some or other, even in unmanifested stage, things are not lost. Both in the beginning and at the end, all elements remain unmanifested. And only in the middle they are, mani are they manifested. And this does not make any real material difference. In reality, that's what it is. If you look at in the full spectrum of our life, you know, then you know, you look at your... Uh, beginning days, college days and later on days, you know, how things, so you are in such and such place and so many things. Uh, we uh, Even we might have read Bhagavad Gita, we might have got the book, we might have read. But once we start in the association of devotees, we are practicing and we are hearing and chanting and gradually, then oh, I never read like this, I never understood like this, I never knew this, what Krishna is saying here. Because we are in a different platform at that time, now we are in a different platform. So then we can under things will mark, start making sense. Otherwise, we lament for things. We'll always go back and oh, let me go back. We we'll look at uh, go back in your 
when you got married you look at marriage pictures videos or when you go to college and you look at college days and always you are pondering on the previous oh this would have happened that would have happened you are lamenting something or the other but in reality it doesn't help us in the long run actually for the final days final exam it doesn't help us and that lamentation is not helpful so that is krishna is bringing that point here and we will read from chaitanya bhagavat and propada lilamrata how soul is inconceivable what krishna is explaining with nice fast time so that we can understand this more uh, uh, from the real life examples of lord shiva's from bhavaneshwar hmm? how lord shiva performs sweet inconceivable past times and we will look at that and propada past time is final days and if you accept the vedic conclusion i stated in bhagavad gita that these material bodies are perishable in due course of time anta vanta me deha we already mentioned this before is concluding but that the soul is eternal nitya soka sarirna then we must remember always that the body is like a dress therefore why lament the changing of a dress but we have so much so many days we are wearing every day so that's why we become attached to oh, no, 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 don't throw this dress no no i like this dress you know even if it's broken i am going to wear it don't throw it so we become so attached no kids all the time no why did you mommy why did you throw this dress no where did this dress go they will become so upset because they are attached once we like things then we become so attached caught up with that so it is like that we are also still a child even though grown up body we still have that child mentality the material body has no factual existence in relation to the eternal soul it is something like a dream in a dream we may think of lying in the sky or sitting on a chariot as a king <laughs> but when we wake up we can see that we are neither in the sky nor seated in the chariot with the vedic wisdom encourages self realization on the basis of non existence of the material body so soul doesn't belong to this body asangoyam purusha so this real purusha the real soul doesn't have this gross body subtle body it has spiritual body spiritual eyes spiritual legs spiritual hands it has body but nothing material so Uh, in either case whether one believes in the existence of soul or one does not believe in the existence of soul there is no cause for lamentation for the loss of the body so that is the final point of sankhya yoga krishna is concluding one more verse is there let's look at yeah he is concluding with this verse aacharya vat pasyati kachit enam aacharya vat vadati tatai vachanya aacharya vat chainam manya srunoti श्रुवाश्चर्यवत्पश्यतिश्चिदेनमश्चर्यवत्पश्यतिश्चिदेनमश्चर्यवत्पश्यतिश्चिदेनमश्चर्यवत्पश्यतिश्चिदेनमश्
आश्चर्य वक्ता कुशलो अस्य लब्धा आश्चर्य अस्य ज्ञाता कुशलान शिष्ट श्रवण श्रुणवतो हियरिंग वक्ता स्पीकिंग स्टिल इट इज इनकंसीवेबल सेम सिमिलर द फैक्ट दैट द एटॉमिक सोल विद इन द बॉडी ऑफ जिगैंटिक एनिमल इन द बॉडी ऑफ अ जिगैंटिक बनियन ट्री एंड आल्सो इन द माइक्रोबिक जर्म्स मिलियंस एंड बिलियंस ऑफ व्हिच ऑक्युपे ओनली इन इंच ऑफ स्पेस इज सर्टेनली वेरी अमेजिंग men with a poor fund of knowledge and men who are not austere cannot understand the wonders of the individual atomic spirit spark of spirit even though it is explained by the greatest authority of knowledge who imparted lessons even to brahma the first living creature who imparted uh, lord narayan lord krishna through flute song he received uh, he was initiated by gayatri mantra to lord brahma mm, brahma gayatri mm, uh, kama gayatri krishna gayatri kama gayatri mm. Brahma was initiated by Lord Krishna's flute. The Brahma or the Adi ke way. The first living being in the universe, owing to a gross material conception of things, most men in this age cannot imagine how such a small particle can become both so great, so small, just like the yogis, anima and lagima. They can become greater than the greatest, big, huge, so gigantic, and smaller than smallest. They appear, they to take sun rays and they enter into sun planet. They take and take, enter into moon planet like that. They can just disappear and appear there. they can do all those feats but still material they can go out of this material universe so those are in this way you can see both so great and so small so men look at the soul proper as wonderful either by constitution or by description illusion by the material energy people are so engrossed in subject matters for sense gratification that they have very little time to understand the question of self understanding even though it is a fact that without this self self understanding all activities result in ultimate defeat in the struggle of existence right it is not a question of we believe or not believe just like the rules of the government con- uh, country state police department all this uh, it's not we believe or not no, no i don't believe in god no, no i don't believe this no it is not you believe or not believe uh, you have to follow in particular country particular state same thing the rules of engagement for the Uh, human being especially but animals and all they, they don't they don't need to follow because they cannot understand this dharma so that's why it is specifically for human beings so it applies whether we know it or not fire is going to burn if you put a finger a child is putting or who is putting in the finger in the fire it doesn't matter it is going to burn so for help they have no idea one must think of the soul and thus make a solution to the material mysteries so some people who are inclined to hear about the soul may be attending lectures in good association but sometimes owing to ignorance they are misguided by accepting the of the super soul an atomic soul as one without distinction of magnitude it is very difficult to find a man who perfectly understand the position of super soul the atomic soul because soul and super soul that's why it is astonishing hmm? so many people first time they hear oh is it where is the soul they don't even know because bhagavad gita says krishna says इस तरह सर्वभूता नाम हृदय ओर्जन तिष्ठति आई एम देयर इन ईच एंड एवरी लिविंग एंटिटी सुपर सोल इन हृदय इन द हार्ट स्पेस ऑफ एन हार्ट दैट्स व्हाई व्हेन हार्ट स्टॉप्स लिविंग एंटिटी सोल गॉन अवे सो व्हेन द हार्ट ट्रांसप्लांट हैपेंस व्हाट इज हैपनिंग द सोल इज गेटिंग ट्रांसफॉर्मड फ्रॉम दिस हार्ट टू अनदर हार्ट व्हेन द सोल इज गॉन व्हाटएवर यू डू ट्रांसप्लांट इट डजंट वर्क as long as the soul is there uh, you call any transplant the soul is still there that's why it is still person is living person is breathing otherwise and uh, they has consciousness he or she otherwise there is no way so there's a one ten thousand people there so inconceivable you can't see can find so teeny from that the whole energy is going flowing from all the way top to the head path to the lowest uh, the legs uh, toes everywhere energy is flowing wherever that energy doesn't flow it gets stunted sometimes the heart gets blocked the blood is not flowing sometimes the finger or somewhere it gets blocked then you leg swelling hand swelling uh, painful because the air and the blood is not circulating properly so then you can understand it is all coming from the soul the energy coming from super soul so both are there in the same place heart in the heart only and parikshit maharaj saw the super soul is also same size one tenth of the deeper But he expanded when Parikshit Maharaj saw. He expanded into nine inches, like uh, his thumb from here to there. He expanded himself. That's why he could see. Parikshit Maharaj could see. Inconceivable. Huh? Uh, he was able to see. That means by divine power, he was able to see. And then, as soon as he came out, he was searching. Where is that person who has saved me, who protected me in the womb? Uh, where is that? Where is that? Mm-hmm. So he was searching on. That's why he developed so much attachment from childhood all the way till last. That's why Krishna himself sent 
Sukadeva Goswami, when he was seven days about to die, because of his deep attachment from his beginning of childhood. So that's why you can, it is inconceivable. That is the explanation. He has super soul and so both are, both are in the same soul and both are of the same, so teeny. But he can do amazing things. And atomic soul has one without distinction. It is very difficult to find a man who perfectly understands the position of super soul, the atomic soul, their respective functions and relationship, all other major and minor details. And it is still more difficult to find a man who has actually derived full benefit from the knowledge of the first understanding itself. One coming to this process of understanding is very difficult, very rare. And after that, knowing it and putting into practice, derived benefit, that's even extremely rare. And after the attaining it, it is even more extremely rare. So, and who is able to describe the position of the soul in different aspects? But if somehow or the other one is able to understand the subject matter of the soul, then one's life is successful. The easiest process for understanding the subject matter of self, however, is to accept the statements of Bhagavad Gita, spoken by greatest authority, Lord Krishna, without being deviated by other theories. But it also requires a great deal of penance and sacrifice, either in this life or in the previous ones. Before one is able to accept Krishna as Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna can, however, be known as such by causeless mercy of the pure devotee and by no other way. Uh, we'll try to understand beautifully properly explaining. Om Adhyana Pagnandasya Gnananjana Sarakaya Chakshurun Meetam Yenatasmai Sri Guruvenam Mukam Karodhi Vachalam Pangum Langete Girim Yatrupa Pangum Mande Sri Gurum Deyatayam Paramananda Madhavam Sri Chaitan Maisur Vancha Kalpadarubhisya Kupasandhu Pehivacha Patitanam Pavane Dhyo Vaishnavi Dhyo Namo Namo Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhaktamda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Vena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadavanyam Dadati Swapadantikam Shatrupa Goswam Rupad Vijaya Shatrupad Vijaya Gaura Bhaktamda Vijaya We are Lord Krishna is very nicely summarizing in the beginning from all the way first Lord Krishna chastised Arjuna that you must be dhira, you must be intelligent, you must use your intelligence to understand your position, understand your um, lineage, where you are coming from, Kunti Marani and Pandu. So Chanana Suchastam Prigna Vadams Prigna, you are intelligent, you are not uh, born in uh, incapable people, you are born in a certain some great dynasty. So, Pregna, Vadaansya Vasudhe, Agata Sunja Gata Nanu Suchanti. But, you are acting, externally you are showing up like I am a great Gandiva wielder and great this, great that. But internally, the words you are speaking is, doesn't seem to coincide with that uh, dynasty. So, you have to come out of this kind of conditioning. It's chastising first. And then further uh, he started telling that this is the bodily concept of life. You have to come out from this. This mm. is so that's why this uh, problem is uh, we have been receiving modern day education, material knowledge repeatedly again and again throughout your childhood. We are receiving. If, if you want to get a job, you want to understand even material education, we have to hear from someone. That also we find a good college, good teacher. When we go to tuition also, we find uh, who is the best math tutor or English. Or whatever we have difficulty, we go to the teacher and understand. Same way, if you want to understand spiritual subject matter, whom we have to go? Who is the best authority? Hmm? Krishna is the best authority. And who is his best devotee? Topmost dude who has transformed everybody else. Who practically applied himself. He himself is pure and he himself followed throughout his life and to end, beginning to end. So, I am sure Prabhupada shared with Hrdayananda Goswami while he was speaking. Hrdayananda Goswami and some other was there. You know, he was describing his childhood. Then one moment he mentioned that there was a never a time I forgot Krishna. There was a never a time I was not performing Bhakti. Prabhupada said. Then immediately changed the topic. So, and a few times it happened, this incident. One time when Prabhupada, so Prabhupada was in Jamsi. Um, League of Devotees first established for coming to US. He was with uh, the first devotee. Um, I forget his name. Mm-hmm. The 
Prabhakar, Achar Mishra, I think, Prabhakar Mishra, first devotee, he was initiated by Prabhupada before coming here. So one day, three days, Prabhupada didn't eat, didn't drink, anything. Just completely in the complete ecstatic, blissful state of consciousness. Place glowing, energy is oozing like anything. is completely in a different platform altogether. He could see, he could sense it. He asked Prabhupada didn't utter a single word. And he had a beautiful garland, smelling fragrance like anything. Never heard, never seen. And then after a few days, Prabhupada shared with uh, his disciple that Krishna himself has given this, appeared and given this garland hmm, so to Prabhupada. So that's why he was completely, he was chanting and he was dancing, he was fully absorbed in that kirtan. So that's why some of his kirtans, if you hear, general people, may, even devotees may, don't hear like that, don't hear. But Prabhupada's kirtan is completely in a different transcendental platform. To, uh, deeply into that Kirtan. Hmm? So, you look at any of the prayers. So, Bajahure Mana is probably that is a very, one of the deep, hmm? uh, heart touching hmm? uh, Kirtan Prabhupada does. So, because he is deeply into it. Hmm? So, Bajahure Mana Sri Nandana Abhaya Charana. That's why his, his name is given. Because he is fearless. He doesn't have any fear of this body attachment. When he was in the flight, also, flight was jumped from all the way high altitude to low. Everybody gasped, everybody is afraid, because so attached to the body. Prabhupada did too much, he was just simply one. So, no, his servant disciples asked Prabhupada, how are you, or this or that. So, who can die any time? So, Prabhupada was un unfazed. So, this is the real one who is, he can show, he can show that you are a great devotee. But when the danger comes, how you behave, then you know, you know, what is the actual real state of consciousness is. The inconceivable-ness of the soul and one who is realized it, practically assimilated in the heart. And so Prabhupada throughout by his own example, so in so many different dealings throughout his life, he showed personally how much he still practiced. He is a pure devotee, but he still practiced till his last breath, till his last breath, as we are thinking. And so here Krishna is saying that, so don't limit. Though and this body is going to change. You should become sober. You are so much lamenting about Bhishma, Drona and all these. Uh, your friends, your uh, your uh, sons and grandsons and father and grandfather. So many types of relations you are changing. You are becoming attached. Mm -hmm. and then he is bringing different philosophies now. First he started speaking his philosophy, Sankhya Yoga. And then he is repeat, keep repeating one thing. Becoming learned and intelligent, they don't lament. Matra again and again repeat lament. No, don't lament. Even at conclusion, also is telling because lamentation is for who? One with the mode of ignorance, passion. Hmm? So, passion, ignorance means you will think of the past, always being the past and lament. One who is in the mode of goodness, you will be in the in current. You will endeavor for the future, some goals will be there. It does, it's not that he will not have goals. He will have goals, but he will always try to see what he can do now, what he can improve now, today, not tomorrow, not yesterday. He doesn't dwell on the past nor in the future too much. He is on the current. That is the mode of goodness. So that's what Krishna is telling him. He is thinking because Arjuna is saying, oh, what is going to happen? They are all going to die. Whom I am going to enjoy? He is already seeing the end. He is result oriented. He is attached to the result. He is seeing the consequences. Uh, so, and past is attached to the body relations in the past. But he's not understanding his current duty. He's not in the present. So, that's why Krishna is uh, telling him that Matrasar, Prasta, Kondu, Sito, Shantra, Again, tolerate. Don't lament and be intelligent, be pregnant and uh, tolerate. These objects of the body is going to come. The senses is going to agitate. It will come. But tolerate it move on by, like a learned person. So then he explains about the how temporary nature. Whoever is dying, getting born, they have to die. Different examples. Vasam Sijarnani Taviya. So different Jatasya Dhuvon Mutya Dhruvam Mutasya Janma Mutasya. All these examples Krishna is giving, explaining about the Sankhya Yoga, about the body, temporary nature of the body, how it is not enduring, and the permanent nature of the soul. Very, with, with some different examples, this way, that way, different positive and sometimes negative theory also. How soul, you cannot break it, you cannot saw, uh, put in the water, without the water, nothing. You can burn it, you can solve it, you can moisten it, 
he can do anything soul is never cannot be touched by matter any weapons any instrument you can't even find it then how you are going to do anything with it and soul is inseparable whether not from the supreme lord it is eternally separated part and parcel of the supreme lord vibhin naam sir separate from jeeva loke jeeva bhuvaka sanatana eternally so we cannot cut to be we cannot cut we can't do anything with the soul that's what krishna is that is a negative way of it because positive way you are not able to understand the characters of the soul but negative way krishna is trying to explain so and then now he is after explaining the soul and body concept of the sankhya yoga then krishna started explaining in the previous verse vaibhasika where uh, there are certain people who doesn't believe that there is a soul like buddhavad and there is a people who are atheists they don't believe but still they think that this body is bag of chemicals okay fine what is the you then you, again you you will get another body you know you don't believe soul bodies are producing bag, through bag of chemicals or however some or the other we are being born different living entities are coming up however they don't uh, rely on the they don't believe that there is soul but they don't they can't explain how the body is people are coming up uh, so but either way whatever philosophy you may think but still uh, uh there is nothing to lament that is the conclusion and the soul is amazing then is concluding that either way believe or not believe this is well, some people it is looking at soul is amazing hearing is amazing still even at the end after hearing after seeing after dis- uh, descriptions but they can understand anything about it so that's what is concluding the ultimate point krishna is telling that you have to do the duty now don't be attached don't be lamenting don't be and tolerate it you have to move on with your duty currently you have to fight on the battlefield for me so that is the point krishna that's when karma yoga starts the so that is the point krishna is making to bring to the karma yoga point krishna has to make this point that he has to perform the duty if he is lamenting he can do no one can do any duty if you are lamenting your mind is always so much distressed but we can't do anything mind not will not let you do anything literally Yeah, because of that that's why we have to give up lamentary that means you have to focus something of the higher nature then only mind can stop so mind has to be attached to something you cannot give up soul is active so desires cannot be given up um, uh, something you are focusing on cannot be given up because mind has to accepting rejecting sankalpa vikalpa is the mind job thinking feeling willing is the subtle body job so either you think material things or you think spiritual things either you are attached to the um, uh, supreme lord krishna and his uh, entourage is uh, devotees or you attached to something else see either way you have to be there is no other way mind has to be fixed on something uh, so it is uh, so now let's uh, read from supopar lilamrutha uh, his final days how much supopar's body for one year hardly ate anything hardly drank anything is is lying on the just the bones literally bones you can see pretty much is bones throughout his body that is pale completely his skin but he is still living he still has energy he is translating he is uh, when especially when he used to be in the association of devotees when he used to hear the scrolls or the books and hear about the different uh, um, expansion of krishna consciousness all over the world then he used to get so much energy because he used to sit up and then talk and talk and talk no he used to translate even then also so it is isn't it amazing no we have become sick little bit then we can't do anything we can't even do even our uh, you know you can't eat you can't sleep when uh, when we are sick we become so worried imagine then how much you know, it is soul is inconceivable the spiritual consciousness how much strength one has if he can tolerate while he being in that situation hardly eating hardly sleeping you know, how can he maintain himself on top and he is doing spiritual activity even then uh, so that let's look at, let's hear and then we can understand those who are blessed have his service still proper that deport the lessons in dying in favor of giving his disciples an unparalleled opportunity to serve him in pure and simple love and he allowed this not only for a few but for whoever came to vrindavan many came and all were allowed to enter sri propa's room dainya daya anya mane pratishta varjane earlier first class i was speaking these four are the characteristic to chant to do kirtan these things dainya daya very very compassionate propa is extremely compassionate more compassionate than the lord 
Uh, even in the last two stages also. Mm. We always allow. Like when we are sick, generally we don't tell everybody to come and you know, family member doesn't help itself first. Mm. We don't want to see because when we are happy and nice, then we want to see everybody else. When we are sick, nobody wants to see so many people. We don't want people to know even sometimes that I am sick. Uh, so, but Prabhupada they allowed pretty much everybody to be with him. Mm. So that means he is not bodily con con conscious. Uh, unparalleled opportunity to serve him in pure, simple law. And he allowed this not only for a few, but for whoever came to Vrindavan. Many came and all were allowed to enter Prabhupada's room, massage his body and sit with him as long as they like, day and night, chanting the holy name for his pleasures. So Prabhupada also recommended his recommended, recomm uh, re recommends, you see that, recommends, is translating. And in this, uh, and this was done openly, so everybody could see his translation. Whereas previously he had always worked in a solitude, he now encouraged all the devotees to come as he lay in the bed, dictating his bhakti Vedanta purpose. He was giving himself completely and declaring it also, telling the devotees present. As I said before in the temple the other day, Prabhupada Thirubhav, Prabhupada told, shared this again. This, that's why we have to hear Prabhupada's pastimes from his disciples that we know. Prabhupada told to, to Bhagavat Prabhu that, do you know why I read my own books? Do you know uh, why I read? Because I get, each time I read new message, new understanding. Do you know why? Because when I sit down to translate these books, I am not writing. Lord Krishna personally dictating. And I am just writing. So that's why I myself read. That's why I myself uh, get no, the new, new understanding each time I am reading. So, Prabhupada is giving his own example. So, is it, because is a not a not of this world. Is a pure devotee of the Lord. So, but he doesn't uh, show that externally. He is internally absorbs himself. Doesn't show like that. He also does like just like any one of us. He chants, he hears, he translates, he, he practices very seriously. Uh, he's showing why he is openly translating. He's showing he wants to show. He wants us to also uh, imbibe that mood of determination of how he could do. Everybody can do. Whereas previously, uh, he was giving himself completely and declaring it also, telling the devotees present, "Never leave me, and I cannot live without your company." They had asked him to stay, and he had and he had agreed, con consigning himself completely to their care. Those who are blessed to have this service felt themselves passing over all barriers of reluctance to serve, as well as all barriers of material desire. By intimately serving Sri Prabhupada, they felt the strength of complete surrender and sense that this world sustained them always, even when Sri Prabhupada eventually did depart from the world. Prabhupada also continued speaking as he had in recent months about being unafraid of death, being fixed in transcendental knowledge. It's inconceivable, isn't it? Hmm. I'm afraid of death. Even small incident or some difficult something happens to us, immediately we become so... Because we are attached to the body. But here, Prabhupada is showing, it is possible for all of us, each and every practice, it is possible to become fearless at the time of death. If we just simply follow and practice it uh, slowly and gradually. About being unafraid of death and being fixed in transcendental knowledge, when receiving a presentation of some of his books recently printed in Portuguese by Hrdayananda Goswami, Prabhupada encouraged him and said, This is life. The material world is just bones. The bones are not our real life. Our real concern is the living force. The bones may remain or go. It doesn't matter. The real life is in, in, uh, sustaining the bones. There is even a history that there was a Rishi who had only bones. So, there is a science by which you can sustain life by only bones. Hiranyakashipu did it. Yeah. When Lord Rama appeared, hardly at bones. Ants are eating, but still he is living. You can understand what kind of yogi Hiranyakashipu was huh, to do that. You are also doing it, Sir Prabhupada, Tamal Krishna said. So, take care of the bones as long as possible, said Prabhupada. <laughs> but the real life is there. Always remember that. The material world means we are simply all protecting bones and flesh together. But they have no knowledge of what they are. This is bodily concept, not so. <laughs> what is repeating? Like Krishna is repeating. Throughout Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is repeatedly telling. Otherwise, why, why one, so many, 20 verses Krishna is speaking? Same thing, body and soul. You are not the body, you are soul. You are not the body, you are soul. Repeatedly. Huh? So, he is engraining. 
control Bhagavad Gita, you will see. And when Atreya Rishi visited Prabhupada and asked that he visit Tehran, this is Iran, Prabhupada said that he was ready to go, but now you have to take a bundle of bones. These were, of course, the same themes that Prabhupada had always taught, the same themes that were in his books. But the lessons were more poignant and striking when Prabhupada applied them to his own situation. See, this is a practicality. Hmm? Prabhupada personally showing by his own example how he has practiced and now at the time of his leaving the body and how he is able to do it himself. Hmm? He is showing by his example. More than one devotee compared Prabhupada to Bhishmadev who gave important instruction in his last days as Bhishmadev felt no pain and delivered learned and loving discourses even from his bed of arrows. Like Lord Krishna wanted to glorify Bhishmadev. Hmm? So Bhishmadev gave instruction to Pandavas at that time. Vishnu Sahasanam, the instructions, both are there. In Bhagavatam, Vishnudev's prayers and instructions to Pandavas are there. Vishnu Sahasana, a separate book, that is also at the same time happened. So many past times. Vishnudev lying down at that time. Vishma Eka Bhaimi Ekadasi is there. The Vishma Pancha coming next Ekadasi. Uttana Ekadasi from November 23rd to November 26th, last day of um, last day of Karti. Five days, Vishnudev himself observed. You know, five, last five days of Karti. Mm, immense, powerful. This last five days immensely powerful. Amazing benefits are there. Within the month itself, 100 times benefit any day of this month, more than a regular days. On top of it, these five days are even more powerful. So, one must take the opportunity to increase our devotions or anything we do in devotion survey like Bhishma Deva has done in those five days. Pandavas has done. Uh, so, so, that's why it's in many places, Padma Puran other places explains uh, how this Vrata uh, has been done. Uh, so, uh, that's why his comparison is given. Like Prabhupada is also on the bed of arrows, bones. Uh, he has only bones, hardly reading. And Vishma determined by his own will that time of departure. Prabhupada also same thing. Uh, so, the pure devotee has that, his own, at, at his own will, he can, he can stay, his course, if he wants to stay. Hmm. So, but no, because more free will increases, we also have free will to a certain degree. But the pure devote, more you are surrendered fully, you know, that a free will goes on increasing. You have more independence actually. Hmm. But devotee doesn't want, but you know, Krishna gives more. And uh, uh, Prabhupada spent his last days oblivious to his physical condition, defying death and instructing his spiritually innocent sons. But Prabhupada's Sons could no longer stand by and simply hear the philosophical lessons. Prabhupada had accepted their affection when they had cried for him to stay with them. And now they wanted to express that affection in the only world they understood. A world with Sri Prabhupada living and talking with them, laughing or reprimanding them as he liked. They wanted him to eat and drink and become physically strong again. But again, Sri Prabhupada seemed to change and he began refusing food and drink. He had postponed his passing away to exchange lovingly with his disciples. And yet, at the same time, by refusing to eat or drink, he was showing his re preference for passing away. He admitted when pressed that it was impossible the course of action. It was an impossible course of action to live without food or drink. Nor did he expect or want miracles. If he was to get better, it would be taking nourishment. But for reasons of his own, he would not eat. He said recovery was material and he didn't want it. He kept closely in tune with the will of Krishna, allowing the holy name to sustain him. The doctors who came were often puzzled, but those who were Vaishnavas understood and respected his prerogative. Prabhupada's servants made anxiety-filled attempts to induce Prabhupada to take regular treatment, but Prabhupada preferred to take only Kirtan and Bhagavatam, while at the same time sustaining a willingness to live. It's a pure devotee. We can't imitate this. Mm, so, few devotees can do this because, as in the next instruction, verse number seven or six, yeah. Tan at Syat Krishna Nama Charita, the Sita, Yavid, the Pitto, but of the Rasanas, the Rochikano, Kintu Adara, Danudinum, Kolusaiva, Justa, Sadvi, Kramad, Tadgata Mola Hantri, like for Jandis, the disease, the sugar candy is the medicine. Same way for the disease of this material nature, material world, but the only disease is the chanting of the holy name, that is the medicine. Uh, one can sustain because spiritual strength is coming from the super soul to soul. Here, Prabhupada is a live example. Mm -hmm. So, but we can't imitate. It requires that he is a 100% surrender. He empathized with his disciples, anxiety, and patiently explained that puzzling situation they were 
they were in. He wanted their care and he allowed them to try and treat uh, him, knowing that it was uh, bringing them more and more into a surrender of love. But gradually it became more clear that Krishna's will was dictating, uh, indicating Prabhupada's departure. Prabhupada, Bhavananda, quacks, always working on the assumption that Prabhupada could stay, could stay if he wanted. Your presence on this planet is the only thing that's keeping the onslaught of Kaliuga from really taking effect. We have no idea even what will happen if you leave. It is not in my hands, said Sri Prabhupada. With the present clarity, uh, with the perfect clarity of consciousness, Krishna, Krishna Balaram, Sri Prabhupada always spoke clearly, logically, and with complete devotion to Krishna. Um, but up until that last, he dealt with practical matters, forming a Bhakti Vedanta Swami Charity Trust for reconstructing ancient temples in Bengal and arranging final details regarding his properties and monies. To all dealings, he stayed always alert and he absorbed himself in Kirtan and Bhagavatam. So, Guru Maharaj, this Bhakti Vedanta Swami Charity Trust, Prabhupada has given to my Guru Vizor Najay Prakasam, made him a president, he made sure that Gaur Mandal Bhumi established all the beautiful temples of all these Acharyas, Prabhupada and Saraswati. Uh, six Goswamis, Gupta Vrindavan. Today we will read some from Boneswar. It is called Gupta Kasi, Gupta Varanasi. The Varanasi is there, Benaras. But the Boneswar is Lord Shiva's place where Sri Ananta Vasudeva, a beautiful Lord Vishnu temple, even now the deity is there, which was worshipped by Lord Shiva. Uh, so Boneswar is a different holy places are there in Boneswar also. It is next to Jagannath Puri. Uh, four places, Boneswar, Konar, Jagannath Puri, one more place, I forget. There is a Char Dham there itself, even in Jagannath Puri. Uh, Bonesur is one of them, out of four. Um, that beautiful description, we can understand these pastimes. Uh, uh, it is inconceivable for us, but the pure devotees uh, can perform this inconceivable pastimes. Uh, so, but yeah, Prabhupada wanted Guru Maharaj to carry out his desires to establish these places, pastime places, uh, establish the temples and carry on the duties and make sick and uh, give Krishna consciousness to others through them, through the Acharyas, because they have lived life practically giving it to others. Their life is to give to others as Prabhupada has done it. Uh, so Prabhupada wants to establish that. So you'll see in all our temples everywhere, under the lotus feet of Krishna, Radha and Krishna and Gornita and Jagannath, you'll see all the Acharyas, because only they can be at their lotus feet, because they are always remembering Krishna Prashtaya, Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya. In all the prayer, Pranam Mantra, you will see that. Vishnu Padaya, they are always at the lotus feet. They are always remembering the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. And they are the most dear to Lord Krishna. Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale. They are not of this world. Bhutale is above this material world. They are of the spiritual world. So in the Pranam, uh, we can understand here. Uh, there, through all dealings, he always stayed alert. But it became oblivious, obvious to his disciples that despite his promise, he was again moving inevitably towards giving the final lesson. He was teaching their love was beyond death. The disciples' love could call the spiritual master back to this world to stay and that a pure devotee has the ability to stay in this world beyond his allotted time. So, we got also, we heard from sharing uh, Guru Mahath's disciples also. Uh, Guru Mahath went through almost many, many significant battles. It is inconceivable. No ordinary person can do uh, pretty much it's extremely rare even doctors themselves couldn't believe he had a huge stroke no one could believe even he could walk he could talk he could do anything pretty much but he is now also preaching a wheelchair lung transplant liver transplant had so many major catastrophes but unfazed unfazed is just going on with his duties with his service to Shapopal uh, so that we can see the practicality and we have heard that in few of the times, he could have gone back. He could have gone back. Prabhupada was falling. But he went on to two things. TOVP has to be finished. And his Krishna Chaitanya book compilation and few other projects. Prabhupada's desires are not finished. His projects are not finished. So he's staying the course, staying on continuing on in this planet. So few devotee gets uh, revelations. He's always in touch with them. Uh, Acharya Parampara and Lord Krishna. So he, they can choose, they can decide to continue on, go back. Uh, so it is in their discretion. 
But for us, we, we don't even get time. Whether we will have seven days or hundred days or how many days. Panchit Maharaj at least will be told. We will not even be told. We have no capacity. But for you devotees, the other way, they have full control. Like Vishnu Dev has full control. Like Prabhupada has control at, at when he, they want to leave. So, so that we can see the practical examples. Some of these great Acharya's examples. Even now, you know, nowadays also. It's not something not, uh, so long only in the history. Even now, never, uh, Prabhupada said. So Prabhupada also recommended his translating and this was done openly. Whereas previously he had... Oh, hold on, where did I go? Uh, the devotees didn't feel angry with him or... Uh, Cheated that meanwhile, however, he was progressing steadily to the final point. The devotee didn't feel angry with him or cheated that he was doing so. He had told him, told them that he had free will given by Krishna, and they also, by their free will, asked him to stay, and he had agreed. But they knew he was not obliged. If despite their prayer, Lord Krishna was telling Sri Prabhupada that he should come back home, back to Godhead, what could they do but accept? If Sri Prabhupada was accepting that they would accept also, nothing, however, could change the fact of their surrendered love. It had now become a solid fact that could not be vanquished by any material changes. They had passed the test of the eternal loving service, and that could not be taken away by death. Apart of, until the end, there were interludes of sweetness as well as displays of Prabhupada's indomitable mood of fighting for Krishna. One day, Prabhupada's sister Srishima arrived unexpectedly and Prabhupada asked her to cook kichri. At that time, Ketra Ananda was trying to put Prabhupada on the road to recovery by gradually increasing his liquids. And Ketra Ananda and other devotees opposed the idea of his uh, denying eating solid foods and Prabhupada insisted. It doesn't matter whether what she cooks does good to me or bad. Said Sri Prabhupada, she is a Vaishnavi, it will be good for me. He then began speaking in an extremely humble way. Probably I became a little puffed up because of my opulence and success, he said. Now God has shattered the pride. If you don't have your body, what is there to be puffed up about? Bhakti Swami protested. So, Prabhupada, whatever you have done, you have not you have done for Krishna. That may be, but in this world, unknowingly, you commit offenses. When Pichima heard this, she exclaimed, No, no, he never committed any offense. You cannot ever commit offenses, said Bhakti Charu. You are God's very dear one. How can you commit offenses? I am a little temperamental, said Sri Prabhupada. I used to use words like rascal and so on. I never compromised. They used to call it a club in one hand and a Bhagavatam in another. That is how I preach. Anyway, make arrangements for my sister. There were also visits from Sri Prabhupada's God brothers, and again Prabhupada asked forgiveness for his offenses. One time, Nishkinja, Krishnadas, Babaj Maharaj, Puri Maharaj, Ashram Maharaj, Ananda Prabhu, Purushottam Brahmacharya and about 20 others came and sat next to Prabhupada's bed. He was resting when they arrived and they joined the kitchen until he awoke. When he saw them, he asked to be rise up. Sitting in the center of his bed, which is God was all around, he addressed them. All over the world, there is a beautiful field up to preach Krishna consciousness. Even, now, even at that stage, Prabhupada sees that vision. Even at that stage also, Prabhupada is so empathetic. That I didn't care whether I would be successful or not. People are willing to take. They are all taking also. If you preach together, Prabhupada so it is not my, it is my movement. I started it. I own it. Huh? So no. Prabhupada wants even then also. Be, from beginning also he was asking. Everybody come together. Let us do it together. This is our Guru's message. This is Acharya's message. Not my message. It is not my movement. It is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. So Prabhupada always wanted to do together. We all should do together. That is the Prabhupada's mood always. Krishna always wants together. Everybody should together cooperate and do it. So he tried his best. Krishna tried his best to come convince Duryodhana. He gave all enough choices to Tutrasta also. But they didn't listen. What can he do? So same thing. Yes, Prabhupada also tried his best from the beginning to convince others to do together. But many of them didn't join. So that's what it is. They are all talking also, if you preach together, the saying of Mahaprabhu, Prithivita Ate Nagarati Gram will come true. We have everything spread, we have everything. Spread the holy name and distribute prasadam. There is a beautiful field in Africa, in Russia, everywhere they are accepting. When Prabhupada began asking his God brother to forgive him, they protested. You are eternal leader, one of them asserted. You rule over us, guide us and chastise us. 
forgive all my offenses propad repeated i became proud of all my opulence no said puri maharaj you never became proud when you started preaching opulence and success followed you that was the blessing of uh, that was the blessing of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu sri chaitanya mahaprabhu and sri krishna there cannot be any question of you being offensive and shubhopat presented himself as mahapati greatly for and puri maharaj did not accept it you have saved millions of people around the world he said therefore there is no question of offenses but you should be called mahapati tapavan the great savior of the fallen amazing so amazing you can see that you know, practical realization or practical example of shilpopa's own life in relation to these two verses what krishna is concluding how practical propa showed by his own example lived to the what krishna is telling in bhagavad gita and at the end he himself could live at his own will and Unaway, unaf, unfazed. He was not afraid of anything, pretty much. And he felt so happy. He was chanting, "Hare Krishna." He said, "Last word, number fourteen, nineteen seventy-seven, at seven thirty p.m." And we were left huh? in the image of devotees in Vrindavan Dham, in Vrindavan consciousness, as per you. That is more. Huh? So this is the practical, practical aspects. Now, little bit, I think I am running late. Let's uh, read ten minutes of this um, pastime of uh, the. Um, Bhavanesh Club, so so that we can understand. Uh, so thereafter, the Lord went to Sri Bhavanesh. This is the Lord traveling through um, Bengal, all over the place, all over Bengal. That time, Lord went to Kasi. Then uh, it's called Bhavanesh. He visited Bhavanesh. That is the past of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, there, thereafter, Lord went to Sri Bhavanesh, known also as Gupta Kasi, where Lord uh, Shankara resides. A description of the holy place Sri Bhavanesh is found in various. literature like uh, swarnadri mahodaya ekamra puran skanda puran and other uh, sanskrit puranas in those literature this place is addressed by various names like bhavaneshwar ekamra kshetra uh, hemachala swarnadri kshetra being requested by some sages vyasa bhagavan reveal the glories of the rarely attained ekamra kshetra This place has been known as Ekamra Kshetra because long ago there was a huge mango tree there. There are ten million Shiva lingas and eight Devdas at this place. The place is superior to Varanasi and is more dear to Shambhu as the best of the Vaishnavas. In Orissa, on the shore of the southern ocean, there is a river named Goda. Sorry, Ganga Vati that flows east. This river is non-different from the Ganga. The transcendental abode named Ekamra Kshetra is situated on the bank of this most sacred river. This place is more Pleasing than Kailash, the length and breadth of this place were three yojanas, twenty-four miles. Eight miles of this place was worshipable to the demigods, and two miles of this place was covered by the shade of the that mango tree. Since time immemorial, at this place, pious persons have taken pious persons have taken bath, chanted mantras, performed sacrifices, offered oblations, performed abhishek, offered worship, offered prayers, accepted prasad, garland. Heard the Purana, saw the lotus feet of the Lord's devotees, and executed the nine forms of devotion service. In Strava Swara Swarnadri Mahoda, it is stated that Lord Purushottam is the maintainer of this place. The eternal Supreme Brahman is eternally present at this place in the form of the Linga Tribhuvan Eshwar. According to the statement, Linga uh, Linga Yate Gayate Asma, the Supreme Brahman resides in the state of Orissa in the form of Linga. Within a sacred golden mountain, um, uh, surrounded by the demigods, since Narayana personally protects this place with a chakra and a club in his hand, he is a Kshetra Pal, our protector of this place. It is further stated that Sarnadi Mahotay, that the Lord Sri Ananta Vasudev personally protects this place with a chakra and a club in his hands. Whereas activities performed without first taking darshan of Sri Ananta Vasudev yield no results. Only those who have unflinching devotion to the Lord Ananta. was they were able to attain the mercy of sri bhavaneswar who is very dear to ananta vasudev i think and during radha yatra we bring that ananta vasudev picture beautiful very unique dis, uh, distinct picture of ananta vasudev i think if i remember correctly uh, beautiful picture of ananta vasudev then bhavaneswari bhagavati by lord shiva uh, and, It heard from the mouth of Shambhu the glories of Ekamra Tirtha, which is superior to Varanasi. She expressed a desire to visit that place. Shambhu then told Bhavaneswari, uh, "You must go there alone, and I will meet you there later." Having received the husband's permission, the ro- she rode on her 
lion carrier and soon arrived at Sarnadri. When she arrived there, the, uh, she saw that it was indeed more pleasing than Kailash. She also saw a great linga emanating white and black effulgence. And Bhavaneswari began to worship the great linga with all ingredients. One day after Bhavaneswari had gone to the another forest to pick flowers, she returned and saw 1,000 cows as white as uh, jasmine flowers come out of a lake and began to lavishly bathe that great linga with milk. After circumambulating linga, this is much like Radha Govind <laughs> in uh, Vrindavan, Rupa Goswami, or uh, even the uh, Madhavendra Puri at the similar pastime. Uh, even the Lord has given the name Govinda in Venkateswara, in, in Trupati. This pastime is there, that same, similar pastime. This cow drinking milk going suddenly at the uh, some place giving no one was there but bush a big ant hill uh, but underneath the deity was there so what did I, so similar pastime like this here also they returned to where they have come from when she saw the the same incident on another occasion she took the form of the cohort girl and began to follow those cows she passed 15 15 years in this way while wandering in the forest one day two young demon Brothers named Kriti and Vasa became captivated by the unprecedented beauty of the cohort girl and expressed to her uh, the, the self-destructive wicked intentions. Uh, Sati immediately disappeared by the sight of the two demons and remember uh, and remembered the lotus feet of Shambhu. As soon as Bhagavati remembered Mahadev, immediately took the form of a cohort boy and appeared before the cohort girl form um, form of Sati. Sati, in the form of a cohort girl, offered obeisance to Shambhu, who had taken the form of a cohort boy. Mahadeva said, Oh, Sati, I understand why you remembered me. There is no need to feel anxiety. By the will of the Supreme Lord, these two demons had expressed wicked intention to you to invite their own reunion, uh, ruination. Let me explain their history to you in detail. There was once a king named Drumala who performed many sacrifices and thereby pleased the demigod. The demigod gave him the benediction that he would have two sons named Tuti and Vasu, who would not be killed by any weapons. So now, by the will of the Supreme Lord, you will have to kill these two sinful demons. Being ordered by her husband, Sati began to wander about within the forest in her form of a coward girl, and within a short time, she met those two demons. To deceive them, Sati said to the two demon brothers, I can fulfill your desire, but I have a condition. I will become the wife of he who can carry me on his shoulder. On hearing Sati's settlement, the two intoxicated brothers began to quarrel between themselves. Then Sati, in her form as a coward girl, placed her two feet on the shoulders of these two brothers and assumed the form of Vishwambhari, who has the power to carry the heavy burden of Vishwambhari. By the weight of Sati, the two demons were crushed and destroyed. The Puranic incident concludes by saying that the, since that time, Sati and Shambhu, the husband of, husband of Sati, left their golden temple in Kashi and have been living in this uh, Ekamra forest. Shiva brought drops of water from all the holy places and created the lake known as Bindu Sarovar. Uh, this is Bindu Sarovar is most famous. Uh, Bindu Sarovar in, uh, in Bindu Madhav temple in uh, Prayag, Allahabad. And this is another Bindu Sarovar in Bhavaneswa. Uh, let's see the description. Uh, after killing the two demons, uh, uh, Kriti and Vasu, by crushing them under the lotus feet, under her lotus feet, Bhavaneswari in the form of a cohort girl fell asleep with an uh, Intense thirst. To quench Bhavaneswari thirst, Mahadev pierced a mountain with the top of his trident and created a well. This well became a renowned Sankara Vapi, Lord Shiva's well. Yet Bhavaneswari desired to drink water from a properly established reservoir. Shambhu thus sent his bull carrier to bring water from all the holy places and to invite Brahma to establish that reservoir by performing a sacrifice. Being invited by the bull carrier, Brahma and other demigods came to this place and offered their obeisance to Bhavaneswara. The bull then brought waters of the Maha, Mandakini and other sources from heaven. He brought waters from Prayag, Kushkara, Ganga, Ganga Dwar, Naimisha, Prabhas, Pitrutirda, Ganga Sagar Sangam, Payosni, Vipasa, Satadru, Kaveri, Gomati, Krishna, Yamuna, Saraswati, Gandaki. Uh, Rishikulya, Mahanadi, and other sources from the earth, and he brought waters on the milk ocean, and other sources from Patal. When the Bhavaneswara saw that all the Tirthas assembled there, he took up the trident and uh, pierced a mountain and said, I have decided to create a lake at this place. All of you offer one drop of water into this lake. After the Tirthas followed the order of Shambhu, Lord Janardana and the demigod headed by Brahma took thick bath therein. 
Bhuvaneswara and his followers also happily entered into these waters. Bhuvaneswara then said, Now two pure the reservoirs of water, Sankara Vapi and Bindu Sarovar, have been established. If one takes bath in Sankara Vapi, one will attain the same features as mine. If one takes the bath in Bindu Sarovar, one will attain my abode. Thereafter, the topmost Vaishnava Sambhu offered his obeisance to Lord Janardana and said, O oh, Purushottama, please decide with Ananta as two deities on the eastern bank of the lake and take the positions of my controller and the protector of this abode. Since then, the Lord Ananta Vasudev has been blessing his dear devotee Shankara, Lord Shiva, by giving him his remnants and residing on the eastern bank of Bindu Sarovar as Shambhu's controller and the protector of this abode. Thus, Bhuvaneswara Shambhu is worshipped by offerings of Sri Sri Ananta Dev, Ananta Vasudev's remnant. In Swarnathi Mahatma, it is stated that the Bindu Sarovar is also known by the name Mani Kanni. Uh, Manikarni Kar Ghat is there. So I think that is a Manikarni coming from that. It is the essence of all Tirdas. If a person takes Darshan of Sri Ananta Vasudev after taking a bath in the essence of all the Tirdas, Manikarni, he will certainly go to the Vaikuntha Loka by giving charity to the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas at this place and obtains a uh, hundred times the fruits obtained as other holy places and by offering oblations here to the forefathers, the remnants of the Ananta Vasudev, the souls of one's forefathers obtain inexhaustible satisfaction. Taking a bath in the Bindu Sarovar is equal to taking a bath in all holy places. By taking Darshan of Sri Ananta Vasudev, after taking bath, one attains unlimited fruits. Festivals like Sri Ananta Vasudev and Sri Sri Madan Mohana Chandana Yatra and both pastimes are held in this Bindu Sarovar. Hmm. This past time goes on. No, pages. Just one verse. This is Chaitanya Bhagavad, Antilira, part 1, chapter 2. Just one verse. Almost 10 or, 10 or more pages as written on the glories of Bhuvaneswar, on the glories of Lord Ananta Vasudev and his dear devotee, Lord Shiva, Lord Shankara, and his wife, Bhuvaneswari, uh, Durga Devi. Uh, so, it's amazing. Inconceivable. What uh, the attachment of the Lord and his uh, dear devotees. Uh, how much uh, they are affectionate, uh, how much they serve. So, Lord wants to serve his devotees, devotees want to serve the Lord. Uh, devotees doesn't want to take Lord's service, but Lord wants to serve. Uh, so, Lord, um, devotees doesn't want to control the devo Lord, but Lord wants to be controlled by his devotees. It's mutual. Uh, so, that's what we, that is, a soul is inconceivable. So, but one who accepts the order of the super soul, the supreme Lord, then we become and then we can actually understand the Supreme Lord and His instructions, His past and His birth, the Nama, Rupa, Kuna, Leva. Everything uh, start, Lord Krishna will start revealing. So that is a, a practical two examples of Shabropa's own life and uh, Lord Shiva's and his wife's own, own life from their past time of, uh, in Bhavaneshwar. We can understand this two verses of Bhagavad Gita. Thank you very much. Well, um,